And I want to take a moment and pray for our Nigerian brothers and sisters, because what is happening in Nigeria, I think many of us have just barely caught a glimpse of what's happening in the the brutality that's taking place there. I don't know enough about the details, but I know that there's a lot of pain and suffering and our, and I've been watching some of my Nigerian brothers and sisters reaching out for prayer and reaching out, please pray for Nigeria, please pray for peace, please pray against police brutality. And so let's pray together and let's believe for peace to come over that situation because those are our brothers, those are our sisters, that's family to us. And I've been there, I've preached there, and so many of our uh, church members from other parts of the world, Nigeria is certainly one of the uh, most populous nations that, uh, that comes to our church, and we're so grateful for all the precious people there. But Lord, we just thank you for, on behalf of our church members, on behalf of our brothers and sisters, on behalf of those that are suffering and those that are hurting and th those that are caught in the conflict of this government and police and citizen conflict. We just plead the blood of Jesus over it, over the nation of Nigeria. We pray for peace over that nation. We pray that the leaders would follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We pray for a calm to come upon and come over the cities of Nigeria. We pray for peace and calm according to 1 Timothy chapter 2, where you said that on behalf of all mankind that we would pray for those in authority, that we would lead a peaceable, tranquil life in all godliness. And Lord, we want that peaceable life. We want that life that we can, be, that we can lead with godliness. We want godliness in our nation, we want godliness in our leaders. We want godliness in our homes. And Lord, we, we, we know that we're never going to be perfect until we see you. But we want godly love in our homes. I pray for godly love in Nigeria to rest over that nation. I pray for godly love in America. I pray for godly kindness. I pray for godly empathy. I pray for godly wisdom. I pray for godly compassion. Lord, I pray as we come up upon an election that is so divisive and so competitive, I pray that you would lead us, that we would not be led by hate. We would not be led by fear, but we would be led by faith. We would be led by love. We would be led by wisdom and that we would see godliness arise in our nation again, that we would see the Bible in our nation more than we ever have before, that we would see the light of your word flood the souls of our leaders, the souls of our businesses, the souls of our families, the souls of our homes, the souls, our souls. Lord, I thank you that we will look to you and will and we come to you, Jesus. You said all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest for your souls. I pray for that, for a rest to come upon the soul of our nation, to come upon the soul of our families, to come upon the soul of our very being in essence, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for joining with me and thanks for uh, yeah. setting that moment up where we could just absolutely have a, yeah. a, a, a in the name of Jesus, like Iris was was leading us uh, and, so and in the name of Jesus moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's how prayer should be uh, punctuated. Mm. And that's how prayer that's how prayer is fulfilled. Jesus said, if you pray anything, ask anything in my name. Yep. My father in heaven will do it in his name, anything in his name. Wow, it's good. It's so uh, so much power that we have so much, so much uh, prosperity. I call it I call it biblical prosperity. It's so often that word prosperity has been associated yeah. only with money right. and it's been abused in that way when it's just associated with money. 
because prosperity is all throughout the Bible that it is it is about the soul. You know, third John verse two, our key, one of our foundational scriptures for my life, for your life, for our church and our family is um, beloved. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. We've been talking about, you know, uh, the soul kitchen, right? Yeah. And how this is the kitchen. The soul is the kitchen of your life. And he says, I pray in all things that you would prosper in all ways that you would prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. So what happens in the soul happens in the whole. What happens in the soul happens in everything else. It follows just as it's just as it's a proportionate comparison he's making. It's a proportionate word in proportion to. So you're going to have good health and prosper in all things, even as or in direct proportion and correlation to your soul prospering. So that. that's what Soul Kitchen's all about yep. the last couple of weeks. Yep, it's been good. Yeah. We've been we've been diving into some good stuff. Last week we talked about what brings us soul value. We hit on a bunch of things. I don't know if you want to uh, go into that at all, but um but that was that was awesome and uh, it was. there was, it was a fun. lot of a lot of I felt a lot of hope coming out of that like Man, no matter what is going on, no matter what how what I'm, my soul, what my condition is of my soul, um, there's hope because God can restore. Yeah. And um, oh, we're gonna so, talk about that. Oh, we got so much come on, restoration right. to talk I, about. I interrupted next, you uh, too weeks. much last time. No, 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 I thought, no. So I want to get out of the way a little bit. Well, you're probably no, I don't know. You're 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 a part of the way. <laughs> cool. You're you're, cool. you're 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 part of the way. Um, <laughs> right. But. Um, I, I brought my keys in case you're wondering why, why you maybe you were wondering, why do you have all your keys yeah, I here? Those were there. Yeah, so I got I brought a couple sets of my keys and um, and I just this kind of became a metaphor to me of of what my life has been like in the last um, six or seven months, because mm-hmm. with the pandemic, I I really if uh, if you ask me what's the first lesson that you've learned in, during this six or seven months, I think I don't know if it'd be in this order, but one of the first things that I would that I would say is simplicity mm. is that God spoke to me to yeah. to strip away the complicated yeah. and revive the simple, the simplicity of life, the simplicity of of what's really important, what really matters. Mm-hmm. And um, and so why, what does that have to do with my keys? So for the last, um, I don't know, 15 or 20 years, I've had two sets of keys. I've always had a set of, I've always had my car key and I've always had like all the rest of my keys. And this isn't even, I, I got rid of even more than, than what's here. But, but I gotta tell you guys, oh, one, one or two or three of these keys used to be on my car key also and but I would always have to remember okay I got to get that set of keys and I got to get that set of keys because that's the building that's the church building set of keys and that's the house and the and the car set of keys and I realized I literally have forgotten I've been religiously carrying these keys with me everywhere I've gone and I literally have forgotten what any of what any of these keys do I don't even know which I like this one right here. I have no idea. This key looks like the key that I grew up with when I was 12. Wow. And I have no idea what this key is for. I have no idea what this key is for. At some point over the last 15 years, I've been told that these keys are like magic. They mm-hmm. open in places that no man can close. You know what I'm saying? And yet I don't even know what any of these keys are. So I literally I took um, the fob yep. off of um, this set of keys because I was always okay. I got to remember the fob, which is connected to 20 other keys. And so I fi- it finally dawned on me three days ago. I'm not kidding. Finally dawned on me three or four days ago. Why don't I just take the fob, you know, that opens the doors to all the church now everywhere, uh, and take it off of this keychain where I have 12 keys. Well, they're not really 12. They used to be, but now there's like five or six that I don't even use. Yeah. And, and, and so I peeled this piece off, attached it to my car key, and literally that's all I have now. Mm. It's literally I stripped away 
the need to think about these keys. I've stripped away the need to remember what they're for. I've stripped away having to get into whatever rooms they open. I don't even need to go in there because if I, if I don't even know what doors it opens, then I haven't been to those places very often. Mm. So there's no reason to hold, carry the keys around. So literally I've stripped away yeah. The compl is just symbolic to me of the complicated life, cool. the yeah. the cluttered yeah. life. Mm. Like like mm. I can I'm so free yes. from these keys. <laughs> I got keydom freedom, ooh, ooh. and I'm telling you, some now now there's revelation flowing. There you now, go. now you can feel the anointing. <laughs> mm. You felt that right? Uh, so simplify, wow, simplify. That. My life has been stripped down to um, really taking care of my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Taking care of my family, mm -hmm. taking care of my church, and yeah. and taking care of the poor. Yeah. Like it's that good. is my life right now. It's awesome. Taking care of my soul, taking care of my family, taking care of my church, and taking care of the poor. And really, frankly, that should be all of our yeah. four things. Yeah. Take care of your soul, take care of your family. Take care of your church, serve in your church, give in your church, connect with your church. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we stay connected and take care of the poor. Like we're taking care of the poor now mm -hmm. during COVID and all of this going on more than we ever have before. Yeah. And I'm not like ashamed that we weren't doing as much before, but I'm thankful mm -hmm. that we're doing more now. Yeah. I'd rather be able to say we're doing more now than we were before. I'd right. rather I'd, I'd, I'd rather have that than the other That's way yeah, where, oh, we used to give a lot to the poor, but now, you know, it's not so much. The poor you'll always have with you, Jesus mm -hmm. said. He said you can always do good for them. He, he didn't say just ignore them. He said yeah. they're always going to you're always going to have opportunity to do them good. Do them good. Yeah. So, yeah, so good. if we can if we can have some takeaways today, uh -huh. one of the things is take care of four things. And then I want to t talk about what it, how to take care of your soul in a more specific way. But you got to take care of your soul. Take care of your family. You know, there's probably somebody in your family that needs a phone call right now. Not right now, but right after this service, not right this moment. You get what I'm saying. That needs a text, needs uh, just call them and say, hey, I was thinking about you. I love you. And if you need anything, let me know something as simple as that. Or what if it's just call somebody in your family that you've been distant from and just say, hey, just wanted you to know I'm sorry, you know, like, wow, maybe maybe we can just heal this right now or or I'm sorry for being, you know, a bad sister or a bad brother or whatever. And I'm not saying don't have a guilt trip, mm. but maybe there's somebody in your family that just needs a touch right now. And I just strongly encourage you to take care of those precious people because life is precious. Life is short. Life yeah. is fragile yeah. and we're in the hands of God. And so everything's going to be all right, but life is fragile and there's no explaining COVID really, there really is no explaining like mm -hmm. there's no science. The science is all over the place. It's been up and down. It's gotten all muddied with politics. Like we have to realize that that God has given us an opportunity. He didn't give COVID, but he's given us an opportunity in the midst of it yep. to reprioritize our lives from the first Sunday. I think this was my first one of my first points, the first Sunday in March that this thing happened. And it was this take advantage of this moment to reprioritize your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Take care of your soul. Take care of your family. Take care of your church. Take care of the poor. And as a church, we're taking care of the poor. Yeah. When you take care of your church, we're taking care of the poor together. Like even this Friday and Saturday, yeah. another weekend, we're giving away over a thousand boxes awesome. of food, 50 pounds of food, last so people for a week. You can see it on our screen. And uh, if you need help with your groceries this weekend, come on out. There's no shame 
in getting a helping hand. There's no shame in having a need. God said, I'll supply all your needs. Sometimes he uses something like this. He does use this mm. as a way to meet your needs. He, he doesn't, he's not limited to just this, but this is one of the many ways that God meets our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know that he wants to meet all your needs, right? He wants to meet all of your needs. Sometimes that calms my soul when I'm nervous or anxious about something. It calms my soul to know that God wants to meet yeah. all of my needs. What was that verse we shared Sunday? He opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. He, he, he satisfies our need and our desire. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's, uh, that's some of what um, I just wanted to get across tonight. I think that's uh, a good start, a good foundation. I mean, that's, there's, that's so much. That's yeah. like more, I think that's the foundation <laughs> and that's the whole house. That's everything. I mean, yeah. I love, well, two things that stuck out to me. One, um, you said about taking care of your church. Um, and it's not that like we, us personally like need people to be to, to be here to be watching but I think there's other people that need you to be watching and commenting and sharing what's got what God's speaking to you yeah. I think I think that that's a that's a dynamic that I think we need to r remind ourselves of is when I'm a, being a part of a church community it's not just what uh, I'm receiving something for me and I'm giving something in my offering or, or, or serving or whatever but it's I'm I'm helping other people and, and, th and can I say something yeah, about that yeah. like uh, right now at this very moment we, every one of us has the opportunity, every one of us connected to Life Changers Global right now, local and everywhere in the world, we can be more connected and more engaged with our church at this moment right, right. now yeah. than any time that we've ever gathered together in person. That's and cool. now I'm not against gathering together in person. You've heard some of what we talked about, one of the things that we're doing upcoming in a couple weeks, but, but, um, so go to our website and find out more about that. But my point is, is that, is that by just sending, by just yeah. putting a comment yeah. on the Facebook page or the lifechangerschurch.com page, if you're watching yeah. on our webcast there, or if you're watching on the Life Changers uh, uh, web page or the Facebook page or my personal, my fan page, whatever you call it, um, putting a comment there that encourages other people, reaching out to somebody who says, could yeah. you guys pray for me? Huge. And not wait for just the, the right. prayer center <laughs> to reach out to yeah. somebody who needs yeah. prayer, but just go ahead and say to the person in the box, hey, I'm, I'm praying for you right now. Uh, hey, Mary, I'm praying for you right now. Like that kind of awesome. engagement and interaction is, is something we could never have done in the same way by just having our church service in person, this is one of the manifold wisdoms of God that in the midst of this, this uh, experiment of life that's happening mm -hmm. called COVID or pandemic, God's expanding our ability to connect together mm -hmm. and to engage together and mm -hmm. to be able to talk to each other in ways that we weren't able to, like I've literally had more communication and more touches yeah of cool. our members in the last six months than in the last six years. That's pretty wild. Just because of the online yeah. connection that we have. Yeah. And I believe that there's a place for both, but I believe God's trying to tell us, do not uh, go gently into the night. Mm. <laughs> do mm. not, don't just, you know, wait for this to all go away. Like seize this moment and take advantage of the closeness that yeah. we have now, yeah. the connectivity that we have now. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, we, we used to have lines of people that would want to talk to the pastor, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in the aisle, and it wore my butt out. Yeah. And I just tell <laughs> and sometimes I had to stop doing that just because of burnout. It yeah. wasn't because I don't love being with the people. Right, right. It's just because of burnout and to be able to make it to the next service and to be able to preach. Yeah. And so uh, maybe like I just see this as God blessing all of us. No, death is never a blessing. Mm -hmm. Losing your job is never a blessing. But I will say this, when something leaves your life, it is the best moment to believe for God to bring something to your life. It's really good. When something leaves your life, instead of sp spending the whole time grieving 
the loss of that thing that's left your life, spend that time. You, there is time to grieve over our lost loved ones, of course, but also take a moment and start expecting for what God is going to bring in that thing, in that, in that, in the place of that job that you might have lost in the place of that business that didn't pan out in the place of um, a broken relationship. Not that we don't want to heal. Of course, we want to heal relationships, but some sometimes they're ear, they're 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 irreconcilable as it, as much as it has to do with you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that there's nothing more you can do. So pray for that person and always carry a goodness in your heart towards them. But move forward and believe for God to bring the right people across your path. And uh, but when it comes to death, obviously, that's that's a whole different category. And there is a time for grief and a time for grieving and a time for, you know, remembering and, and honoring and memorializing the, our loved ones. But also even in that God wants to do something new in your life. That person's presence in your life now in heaven is making room for you to fill your life with something else, a greater purpose in honor of that person that you might have lost. So we should always look for the good. Mm. And as we talked about yeah. daily bread a few times, look for the good mm -hmm. and expect the good and do the good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's so much there that we talked about and go back listen to that or I'll preach on it again sometime. But yeah, yeah. That's, so that's um, awesome. so we are uh, our ability to engage. Yeah, is so critical. Yeah, and is. I want you guys to connect, 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 yes. connect, 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 connect. Go to lifechangerschurch.com slash connect. Yeah, yeah. And let's yeah, connect. I mean, life groups you can be a part of. Watch parties you can start in your home. Yeah, um, start a watch party. You can volunteer from anywhere in the world. I mean, there's literally there's, there's so many ways um, just and just watching and chatting. You know, that's that's awesome as well. So. Um, really, really love that you touched on that. And then also just that whole, that whole concept of simplifying, yeah. like what I, how I'm interpreting that is essentialism. Yeah. Essentialism is like really identifying the things that are most important in your life and eliminating everything else. And like you said, decluttering. Yeah. And I, I mean, I remember growing up and I, I feel like there was always, there was come time, you know, the year where mom would, you know, say, guys, we're gonna declutter on a Saturday. Uh, I need all works. of you guys to be here. And yeah. we would all dread it. And I think oh. we, I think we, we like avoided quite a bit of that. Like there was, I think we kind of left her hanging a little bit, but. But because there's always like it's oh, the fe that feeling of like, oh, I got to like, go through stuff and then you don't want to throw stuff out because you're like, I might need that. I might yeah. wear that. And I think I heard I heard one time it said that like when you're decluttering your closet, don't ask if you might wear that thing. Ask, does this make me look amazing? Yeah. And that's going to get it, that's going to get rid of a lot of, a stuff, lot of for stuff for all of us. A lot of We're stuff. going to be throwing out a lot of giving away, <laughs> giving away to somebody that it will look amazing true, on. True. Because it's always going to look more amazing on somebody else. So give it away. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just I love that. It's like, let's get rid of the stuff that we don't actually need. And like you, like you said, with the keys uh, example, like we don't even realize sometimes the stuff that we're carrying around that we don't actually need. And I we think don't need it. we have to get in the driver's seat of our lives and be like, this is what I need. This is where yeah. I'm going. And I'm going to only carry the stuff that actually really are essential to me and to my destiny and to what God's called me to do. And specifically those four things that you laid out. So yeah, awesome. and you got and you and you have to, like you said, be in the driver's seat. You have to seize control of your soul so you can seize control of your life. You have to seize control. You can't let your soul be uh, borrowed and carried around and burdened by other people. You have to be responsible for your soul. Your soul is in high demand. Remember the four things that we talked about, what makes the soul so valuable It's design, it's designer, it's durability and it's demand. Like your soul is in high demand and you cannot afford it's kind of like you have to look at your soul like a bank account. You can't spend what you don't have. So you have to feed your soul. You have to feed your soul, feed your soul. Like right now I'm feeding your soul, but I'm not the sole source of feeding your soul. I'm the I'm the spark plug of you feeding your soul. I'm the igniter. I'm the ignition. 
I get the engine going, but you have to continue to feed your soul on the things that you're hearing and the things that I'm sharing. And, um, and so, and so I've broken this down to three things that I want to kind of zero in on what to feed your soul with. So, so what are we supposed to feed our soul? Like when you go into, uh, uh, any sort of physical, uh, regiment or diet or people that, that perform in beauty contests or athletic events or, um, or any sort of, uh, bodybuilding things, everybody has to be focused. They always have to focus on what they're feeding themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you, when you adopt a dog, you got to feed that dog things that are going to be healthy and nutritious for that dog. I had a dog when I was, a, when I was like, I didn't have a dog when I was a kid, but then when I was 17 and I had my own job and I was making money, like I was making a lot of money at 17. I'm not going to tell you doing what, but one of my jobs was legal. Um, but, but <laughs> one of them, but, um, but I bought this dog, like a, it was a, champion dog, golden retriever, family of champions. I didn't know what I was doing with this dog. But one thing I knew was you got to feed this dog the right stuff because the dog will get sick. So one time the dog broke through like uh, into one of the rooms where my mother had been making, you know, the I think there was the dinner for the next day or something. It was in the utility room because it was colder in there. So there wasn't room in the refrigerator. So she put the food on the washer and dryer and this dog, man, it was like a, it was like a, a leg of lamb or, you know, like some big chunk of meat. This dog sniffs this food out and goes in there in the middle of the night or when everybody was at work or when everybody's gone. I can't remember. But when I came home, this dog had this, had grabbed this, this piece of meat, drug it up to the room, my room where he stayed with me, he stayed in my room. This dog did. You guys didn't know this, did you? This dog was my roommate. I made him my roommate and he just, just pooped everywhere. He ate this thing, man. He ate this leg of lamb and that leg of lamb was all over my bed, all over the rug all over the closet. Uh, I think I just got saved. It was all over my Bible. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> this is bad stuff. And because even though that tasted good to that dog, it smelled good to that dog. It wasn't good for the dog. Yeah. Long story <laughs> to make a simple point. We got to feed our soul. Mm -hmm the right things. Mm -hmm. There's three things that we need to feed our soul. Are yeah. you ready? And yeah. I'll talk about three of them. Some, maybe one more than the other, but you'll get the three. This is what you need to constantly be feeding your soul. Number one, beauty. The soul needs to be fed beauty. And let me just tell you the three and then we'll kind of backtrack. You, you got to feed your soul beauty. Number one, God created beauty because it represents him because he is altogether lovely. He is altogether the most beautiful being in the universe, but natural beauty. Um, I just, Oh, let me come back to that. So number one, you got to feed your soul beauty. Number two, you got to feed yourself Jesus. Now Jesus is beauty, but God wants us to see the beauty in life in addition to Jesus, but he wants us to feed, feed ourselves Jesus. Now, when I say feed yourself, Jesus, Throughout the Bible, the theme of the Bible is not laws. It's not do's and don'ts. It's not rules and regulations. Everything in the Bible is all about Jesus. As you heard me say in the past, in Genesis, Jesus is the seed that is going to crush Satan's head that Jesus talks about in that the Bible talks about in Genesis. In Exodus, he's the deliverer. He, he's the Moses that delivers us, delivers us out of sin, out of the bondage of Egypt and into the promised land. Jesus is in Leviticus. He's the great high priest that we get to go to our Levite, the high priest, Jesus come boldly to the throne of his grace. And we have a high priest who sympathizes with our weaknesses. And there's so much I could t t tell you about that. Let me come back to that. The third thing we need to feed ourselves our soul. We need to feed our soul. 
Number one, beauty. Number two, Jesus. And number three, time. We must feed our soul time. Now, I'm going to come back to that, but your soul needs time. Your soul needs time to rest. Your soul needs time to develop. Your soul needs time to be transformed. We'll come back to that in a moment. So these are the three things that we need to feed our soul. Beauty. Jesus. Don't read the Bible to find out the next rule. Read the Bible to find out the next sliver of light that gives a reflection of Jesus in the in the book. Jesus, the compassionate one, the the healer, the great and mighty general, the 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 lion of the tribe of Judah. He's everything and all of that all rolled up in one. And our soul needs time. We have to feed our soul time and we'll come back to that. But beauty, let's 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 go to beauty for a moment. Jesus said in Luke 12, 27, he said, consider the lilies of the field. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. In fact, he said, go and look out, go outside and look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor they spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his glory was clothed like one of these. Now, I don't have lilies to show you, but I have some beautiful flowers. Like if you guys can post some couple of pictures of the flowers that I sent you, like I want you to see. I know, right? But these are real pictures. I just want volcano? you to see what was that in the background? Beauty. What's that in was the that, background? Was that a volcano. It was kind of intense. Yeah. <laughs> mountain, volcano. You go back to the last one. What is what, let's let's see what that was. Oh, yeah. That's, that's just that's that's, just, that's yeah. God's beauty. That's the beauty of God's creation. Beauty. Go, keep going. Go, look, look at the next one. OK, yeah. Wow. They're bowing to Jesus right there. Right. You see that they're bowing to Jesus. Don't leave now. I didn't go crazy. What's that? Where's that other one with that field of like uh, lavender or something? Look at that. Look at that. You guys, our crazy. soul needs this in our eyes. Our soul mm. needs this in our in our nose. Our soul needs this in our in our presence, in our proximity, in our yeah. touch, in our feel. Uh, you can put it back on me now. Our soul, <laughs> our soul needs beauty. We have to feed ourselves beauty. The reason to go on vacation at times is not just to have time, although remember, we got to feed ourselves time, but it's to see things. You got to see things. You got to see what the beauty of creation. You got to see the beauty of this earth, the, the beauty that Jesus said, if you want to stop worrying, Go outside. He literally tells us to go outside. Look at the birds, he says. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the stars. Look at the sky. Count the stars if you can count them. I mean, there's so much beauty if we just look for it. Look for the good. Look for the good. I said the other day, remember the good and then look for the good and choose the good. We got to find the beauty. We got to look for the beauty. Our eyes are made. You see, I believe if we feed our soul real beauty, God made beauty, we lose our appetite for like dark beauty. You know what I mean? Like things that are not healthy for your soul. Our soul craves our soul craves beauty. If you don't feed it legit beauty, you'll find illegitimate beauty, whether that's through pornography or through some other way of finding illegitimate beauty, even though like people may be beautiful who are in pornography. But that is not God has not created the human body to be objectified in that way. And you're not going to hell if you looked at some pornography. I'm not I'm not I, I ain't mad at nobody. All right. I, I don't want no trouble. But what I'm telling you is when you feed yourself, when you feed yourself real beauty, and you look at those those um, that lavender, that field of lavender, that field of daisies, that beautiful mountain, the beautiful things that God, the beautiful animals that God's created. Um, in fact, I got one of my animal buddies right here. Watch this. Check this guy out, because no, 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 nothing can. Yeah, that wasn't what I had in mind. But yeah, look at that peacock. Look at that peacock. That's a real picture. 
This is not an artist's rendering. If an artist can draw that, it would be amazing. But God made that. God made that. Where's my bear? Where's my bear? My buddy. Like, whenever, whenever you have a problem in life, always show somebody a picture of a beautiful, cute bear, and peace will come. Like this guy, look at this guy. That's beautiful. God made that. Now you say, well, come on, why are you wasting moments? You're wasting my precious moments on showing me pictures I can look online. Yes, but you weren't doing it. <laughs> there's so much there's so much ugly in this world. You have to be intentional in feeding your soul beauty. And some of you, you look at beautiful things like what I just showed you and you don't have it in perspective. I want to give you the perspective that this is what we have to feed our soul. Your soul needs this. Your soul needs to see beautiful things. That's why cleaning your house is so important. It's not because you should be a perfectionist, but you should want to wake up to something that looks peaceful and beautiful. And that's why you should decorate. And that's why these things matter. People say, oh, there's nothing else matters except, you know, whether Jesus is coming back tomorrow or not, nothing else. And there are things that matter because beauty is God's great evangelist. This is mm. beauty is God's great evangelist. You can you, you can look at you can start with anybody. You can have a start a conversation with anybody about the gospel by starting with beauty. Let's look at the beauty. Look at like these like look at this picture of of Saturn. Like I was just blown away recently. I've been looking at this planet and I don't know, maybe this is maybe the pandemic has gone to my head, but I get like I'm amazed. This is a real picture from the Hubble telescope or the Hubble satellite or whatever it is. This is a real picture of a planet in our galaxy that God put there. Nothing that 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 kind of stuff can't evolve out of an explosion. This is a creation. This is beauty. I've never seen like I've never seen any planet more beautiful than that. Look at this. Look at the the ring around it. It's perfect. It's perfect. I bet if you get closer to it, maybe you'd see its imperfections like we do with everybody in our lives. But that thing like that's majestic mm -hmm. and it's not a waste of time like this stuff feeds my soul. Beauty feeds the soul needs beauty. The soul yeah. needs beauty. Why should you comb your hair, put makeup on, dress up, even if you got nowhere to go, dress up on Sunday morning to sit in your living room and watch the preaching and, and, and have church in your living room? Why? Because God wants you to value yourself enough to realize that you're best when you're at your most beautiful, when you and I don't mean like when you're young, I just mean when you when you realize that you're that you are the thing of beauty that God made and that you should be able to look at yourself and say, wow, God made something special when he made me. You might think that's egotistical. You might think that that's not humble. You might think that that's proud or arrogant, but it's really the most humble way to look in the mirror and say, God made me and I'm beautiful because I'm his creation. And maybe this world has screwed up my beauty. Maybe my decisions have screwed up my beauty, but I am looking for the beauty in me and I'm going to show beauty to others and I'm going to show the beauty of others to them. This is what the soul craves and this is what causes the soul. The lack of intentionally feeding the soul beauty is what causes the soul to crave. Um, as I put it earlier, illegitimate beauty. So let's feed ourselves the beauty that God gave us. Number two that you feed your soul with is you got to feed your soul Jesus. That's why I preach Jesus to you. That's why I look at this scripture in Acts chapter eight, verse thirty five, when Philip was in the chariot with the Ethiopian eunuch, it said that the, the eunuch was ready to talk about G, to hear about Jesus. And it says Philip opened his mouth and beginning from this scripture preached Jesus to him. 
He didn't preach religion to him. He didn't keep the scripture up for a moment. He didn't preach religion to him. He didn't preach legalism to him. He didn't preach Judaism to him. He didn't preach the laws to him. He didn't preach don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't lie, don't cheat, don't do this, don't do that. He didn't preach that to, 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 the, to the eunuch because that's not what the man needed to be saved. The man needed Jesus to be saved. So he showed him in the scriptures he, show, he, he preached Jesus to him from the scriptures because the scriptures are Jesus is in the scriptures and we need to find him in the scriptures. And look, I get it. There are many commandments in the Bible. And then there are many and there are many things that the Bible says we should obey God about. But none of but all of that is the fruit of having the right root. And the root starts with looking for Jesus in the Bible and feeding your soul Jesus in the Bible. When I read about Joseph in the Bible, I'm reading about Jesus. I see Jesus in Joseph. I see Jesus in Moses. I see Jesus in Rahab. I see Jesus in Joshua. I see Jesus in in um, David. I see Jesus in all these people. I see Jesus in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I see Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, all of them. I see Jesus there. I look for Jesus there. You got to feed yourself Jesus. You see, I heard we were on our way to tonight to, to the service to moments. And I just was scrolling through the satellite stations on my on the radio and and it came on some religious station. I thought, oh, I'll just listen, see what this guy's saying. And this guy's yelling at people. You got to stop. You got to get the pride out of your life. You got to get the anger out of your life. You better get this out of your life. The envy. Our hearts are so filled with this and filled with that. And I just could not take it. I literally could have screamed like, get off of my radio. I'd rather listen to Led Zeppelin. I'd rather listen to ACDC. I'd rather be back in black than that. <laughs> You get my point. I'm not I'm not telling you to listen to that music. I'm telling you that's that's got more light than than what he was preaching. What he was preaching was condemnation and legalism and the law. And I, I didn't hear the whole context, so I'm not judging the guy. I don't even know who it was. But what I'm saying is if we got 15 seconds of an opportunity with somebody who's willing to listen to us for 15 seconds, it ought to be the beauty of Jesus coming out of our mouth. Not thou shalt not. Are you feeling what I'm talking about? Like this is I, you got to feed yourself Jesus because you know what? Whatever you feed yourself is going to come out. If you feed beauty, feed your soul beauty, beauty is going to come out. If you feed your soul enough, Jesus, Jesus is going to come out. I know he's already in there. I know he lives in you, but you got to feed on his beauty. That's why David said in Psalm 27, verse four. Remember that scripture? I think we shared it in the message Bible. I might have written it down here, but Psalm 27, verse four in the Message Bible. Look at what it says. I'm asking God for one thing and one thing only to live with him in his house my whole life long. I'll contemplate his beauty and I'll study at his feet. You know, if you leave that verse up for a moment, if you look at the order in which he says that I'll contemplate his beauty. And I believe this is cause and effect when you contemplate his beauty you're going to want to study at his feet when you contemplate his beauty, when you see how beautiful Jesus is. And we did a whole, I don't know, a month teaching about the beauty of Jesus it wasn't long enough for me. But if when you see when you see how beautiful he is, you it makes you want to study at his feet rather than I need to study the Bible. I really need to be a good Christian and study the Bible. No, you need to be a bad Christian and be awakened to Jesus beauty. Be don't be bad. You know what I'm saying? Just be you. And part of you is bad. Part of you is good. But you got to get a hold of the beauty of Jesus, because that will lead you to want to study at his feet. And this is why Mary chose to sit at Jesus feet. She saw his beauty. How did she see his beauty? She saw his beauty in his mercy. She saw his beauty in his forgiveness. She saw his beauty in her saying in him saying to her, I'm not looking at your sins. I'm not judging your sins. She who had been forgiven much, loved much, forgiven much, loved much. She saw the beauty in Jesus forgiveness. You see. Everyone 
who's watching me right now, you've had food on your table. That's the beauty of Jesus. You've had a friend or a church member or one of our team reach out to you. That's the beauty of Jesus. You've had somebody who might have been a stranger do something kind at one time or another in your life or in the pandemic. That's the beauty of Jesus. You have a job. That's the beauty of Jesus. You don't have a job. He's given you a beautiful promise that he'll meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. That's the beauty of Jesus. You're forgiven. That's the beauty of Jesus. He's not judging you. He's not mad at you. That's the beauty of Jesus. And there's so much more I want to say about that, but I want to just say one final thing about time because we need to feed our soul. We need to feed our soul these things. We need to feed our soul beauty. We need to feed our soul Jesus and we need to feed our soul time. And I, I want to say this about time. And I'm quoting a Franciscan priest who made this observation. He said the New Testament has a clear sense of history working in a way that is both evolutionary and positive. See, for example, Jesus, many parables of the kingdom which lean heavily on the language of growth and development. His common metaphors for growth are the seed, the growing ear of corn, the weeds, the wheat growing together and the rising of the yeast. His parables are almost always about finding, discovering, being surprised, experiencing, experiencing reversals of expectations changing roles and status. None of these notions are static. They are always about something new and good evolving and coming into being. Why is this so important? Because without it, without understanding the evolutionary process of change, the process of growth, the process of our soul becoming healthy, without it, we become very impatient with ourselves and we become impatient with others even when we especially when we have setbacks, humans and history, humans and history both grow slowly. They don't grow fast. They grow slowly. Feed your soul time. Feed your soul patience. Feed your soul space for grace. Feed your soul time. Give yourself a break from having to be perfect from having to have it all together. Give people a break. Give, you know, with all this going on in politics, give the politicians a break. I don't like politicians. I don't like politics. The church is to be the conscience of the state, not, the, you know, not, you know, preaching um, politics. We're preach Jesus. We're to preach Jesus. I read an article. I know I'm just about done. I'm going to pray for you. But I was reading an article today that a pastor recently left his church because he said the congregation was too political. He literally left his church. Like sometimes we hear the preacher is talking so much politics that some people leave the church. But in this case, the people were talking so much politics. The pastor left the church, not for the night, not for a week. He quit. He said, this church is too political. This church is too in involved in Democrats and Republicans. I don't want anything to do with this church. The pastor said that. Well, you really you really went off in a wrong direction when the pastor has to leave because the church is so political here. We're about Jesus. Everybody should vote. Everybody should pray. Everybody should pray about who to vote for. Everybody should vote for the most biblical thing that you can find. But we're about Jesus and we need to give ourselves room and space for grace. Let me pray for you. If you've never received this beautiful savior into your life, I want to pray with you first. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord, there is a heaven and there is a hell. And as Rob was talking about earlier that we give to rescue people from hell, to get the gospel preached so that people can be saved. How can they hear without a preacher? How can we preach unless it's sent? And now we're here and now somehow time has brought you and me 
together for this moment. God has brought you and me together for this moment so I can pray for your soul. Would you, would you pray with me? If you'd like to accept Jesus Christ and be sure that you're going to heaven when you die, just pray this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, just right where you're watching, Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life. Just say that I invite Jesus Christ into my life to be my Savior and to be my Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. From this moment forward, say that. From this moment forward, I'm a child of God. If you prayed that prayer to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you have just become a part of the family of God. And I welcome you home. There's a little uh, box on your screen. You'll see uh, a link to my book, The Power of a New Life. It's the next steps of the Christian journey. Take the next steps and it'll it's it's free. You can download it from anywhere in the world and it'll show you the next steps. And the first step and most important now that you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord is now stay connected to to this family. This is our church is not a institution. It's a family and we welcome you into this family. And for everybody watching, I just pray for a revelation of the value of your soul. Lord, open every one of our eyes to see the value of our soul so that we'll feed it the right things. We'll feed it beauty. We'll feed it. Jesus we will feed it time and we'll be patient with ourselves and others in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, yeah, there you go, Robbie. I hope uh, that encourages people and we love having you guys. And thank you for being uh, letting life changers in your home. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Lots to digest there. Uh, so excited to get dive into this a little bit deeper, but um, thank you for this. And I also just wanted to mention uh, Neil on the chat says that uh, Saturn is actually visible uh, from your, you know, the, this night sky this month. Wow. So Neil is taking care of our church right now yeah, I in love the it. chat. I love it. So I love it. Uh, let's feed ourselves some beauty. Wow. <laughs> and uh, But really awesome word. Um, okay. I'm excited for Sunday. I just yeah. I want to give one final shout to everyone to join us this Sunday because we're celebrating 27 years as a church and man. So it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. Every Sunday is a blast. And so we're getting better and better every week is just more and more that we're, we're enjoying together. So be a part of it Sunday. All the service times uh, are on our website, lifechangechurch.com. We'd love to have you there. And then again, if you need food, groceries, free groceries this weekend, Friday and Saturday. So come on out. If you're in the local area, we are here for you. Any final? And, and, yes. Final my words? final word is smile because mm. mm. God loves you and everything is going to be all right. Smile because God loves you and everything is going to be all right. We love you guys. God bless.